Hey, it's Tuesday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. Father, I thank you for ministering to them today in a great and in a mighty way by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for the next two weeks on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled A Strong Spirit. And in this series, we're learning about the importance of having a strong spirit. And then next week on the broadcast, we're going to get into some things that you and I have to do if we want to have a strong spirit. Now let's go back over to Proverbs chapter 18 and let's look at our foundation text there in verse 14. Proverbs 18 and in verse 14 it says this, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? The Amplified Bible says the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? And then the Message Bible, it says it like this, a healthy spirit conquers adversity, but what can you do when your spirit is crushed? And on yesterday's broadcast, we learned that if, if my spirit gets weak as a believer then I can no longer function effectively as a believer. I believe with and from my spirit. I choose with and from my spirit. I fight with and from my spirit. I speak from and with my spirit. I hear the voice of God from and with my spirit. I love others from and with my spirit. And if my spirit gets weak, I cannot do any of those things effectively. And that's why that verse reads that in the Message Bible, but what can you do when your spirit is crushed? The Amplified Bible says, but a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? King James says, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? The idea is, if your spirit gets weak, all hope for you operating victoriously for you uh, enjoying prosperity, for you operating effectively for God and in the kingdom of God, if your spirit gets weak, none of those things are possible. In fact, on yesterday's broadcast, we started off by telling you that as a believer, to live effectively, to live prosperously, to live victoriously, your spirit must be strong. Now, in talking about having a strong spirit, one of the most important things that you and I must do is we must acknowledge that we actually are spirit beings. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to look there at verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and in verse 23... It says this, now the Apostle Paul is praying for the church here, and he's praying this. He says that the very God of peace would sanctify you wholly. Now the word holy there is talking about sanctify you entirely. He goes on to say, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so in that verse, the Lord is revealing to us that we are not just a body. We are certainly not just a mind, but we are tripart beings. We are spirit beings. We have a soul that's made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. And, and our soul is located in our spirit. And then, of course, if you're in the earth, you have a body. And so man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. In 2 Corinthians 4, 16, it says this, Though the outward man perish, yet the inward man 
is renewed day by day. And so is there an outward man? I mean, you see my outward man today, it's the body that you're looking at. So there is an outward man, but there is also an inward man. My spirit today, you can't see with your eyes, but that doesn't mean that he's not real. I can't see your spirit with my eyes, but it doesn't mean that your spirit is not real. Come on, there's an outward man and there's also an inward man. 1 Peter 3, 4 says the hidden man of the heart. And so friend, in, in having a strong spirit, one of the first things that you and I have to do is we have to acknowledge the reality of our spirit. Proverbs 18, 14 said, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. And so it's apparent from that verse that man is a spirit, man has a spirit. We saw it on yesterday's broadcast in Genesis 2, chapter 7, when it said the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, that was his body, and then breathed into his nostrils the breath or the spirit of life, and man became a living soul. And so say this with me today, friend, as you're watching the broadcast, say, I am not just a body. Come on, friend, say it with me. I am not just a body. I am not just a mind. I am a spirit being. I have a soul and I live in a body. See, friend, that's what you have to start there when you're talking about having a strong spirit. If you don't acknowledge the reality that you are a spirit, if you don't acknowledge the reality that you actually have an inner man, then you won't go about doing the things necessary to keep your inner man strong. And so say it with me again. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. Now, in all three of those areas, spirit, soul, and body, you have the capacity to be weak or to be strong. I mean, you, you know just from living your life that your body can be weak or your body can be strong. Your body can get tired. Uh, your body can break down. Your body can be uh, ill-fit and not in good shape, and it can be a weak body, or your body can be strong. You can be uh, well-rested. You can be fit and in good shape. You can be healed. So your body can be strong. Your body can be weak. In Matthew 26, 41, Jesus said, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh, or the body, is weak. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16, we already looked at that verse but it's talked about how the outward man perishes. And so you can see from those verses and, and know from your own life that your body can be weak, your body can be strong. Well, the same is true about your mind. You can be of a strong mind or you can be weak-minded. Um, 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. A sound mind is a strong mind. An unsound mind is a weak mind. And so your mind can be sound, your mind can be strong, your mind can be unsound, or your mind can be weak. If you look up that word sound mind in, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it's talking about a disciplined mind, our self-control. See, when you're weak-minded... You, you lack discipline, you lack self-control, and you're governed by your feelings and your desires. That's being weak-minded. When you're strong-minded, you have self-control, you walk in discipline, and you're not governed by those things. And so come on, you can be weak-minded, you can be strong-minded. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.13, it says, comfort the feeble-minded. In Isaiah 7, 4, it says, neither be faint-hearted. You look up the word faint-hearted and it means weak-minded. So you can be weak or strong in your body. You can be weak or strong in your mind. And so about, how about this other part of us? How about the real part of us? The, the part of us that who we truly are, our spirits. Well, your spirit can too be strong. 
your spirit can too be weak. In Ephesians 3.16, the Apostle Paul was praying, and he prayed that the Lord would grant them, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. And so you can be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit in the inner man. The inner man can be strengthened. The inner man can be strong. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says the inward man is renewed day by day. The word renewed means new strength every day. And so just like your body, just like your mind, your spirit can be weak. Your spirit can be strong. Now, to be strong in any of those areas, you have to get involved in the laws that govern strength for each of those areas. The way that you get strong in your body, the way that you get strong in your mind, the way that you get strong in your spirit is you get involved in the laws that govern strength for your body, for your mind, for your spirit. Friend, if you don't um, get enough sleep at night, if you don't exercise, if you don't eat right, if you don't drink enough water, if you don't eat, uh, have the right kind of diet, then chances are your body's not going to be strong. And why is that so? Because you are violating every one of the laws that govern strength where your body is concerned. If you want your body to be strong, you got to get involved in the laws that govern strength for your body. If you want your mind to be strong, you got to get involved in the laws that govern strength for your mind. And if you want your spirit to be strong, you got to get involved in the laws that govern strength for your spirit. The way to get weak in any one of those areas is to just violate the laws that govern strength. And so as believers, if you and I want to have a strong spirit, if we want to be strong on the inside, we have to gain knowledge of the laws that govern strength for our spirit. And then we got to get involved in those laws. We got to put those things into practice. We got to put those things in motion in our lives. If we learn about the laws that govern strength for our spirits, and then get involved in those laws, that is the only way to have a strong spirit. For in your spirit doesn't get strong just because you beg God all the time, Lord, give me strength, give me strength, give me strength. You can beg God for strength day and night, but if you don't get involved in the laws that are going to make your spirit strong, your spirit will be weak. I mean, just take that example over to your body. Lord, make my body strong. Make my body strong. Give my body strength. Well, you eat fast food all the time. You don't exercise. You don't get enough sleep at night. You don't drink enough water. You're violating every law that governs strength for your body. And so you're not just going to pray to God and have those laws overridden and be strong in your body. Well, the same is true for your spirit. If you want to be strong on the inside, there are certain things that God lays out in His Word that, that teach us how to be strong in our inner man. And so we got to get involved in those laws if we want to be strong on the inside. See, to be strong on the inside is not automatic just because you're a Christian. You can be a Christian with a weak spirit. You can be a Christian with a weak inner man. In Ephesians 6 verse 10, God says this by the Spirit, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In 1 Corinthians uh, 16, 13, it says this, watch ye, stand, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Well, why would God have to tell you and I to be strong? Because it's not automatic. As a believer, if, if we were automatically strong, God wouldn't have to tell us to be strong. And so it's apparent that there are things that you and I can do that will enable us to be strong on the inside. But just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're strong in your inner man. Your inner man's born again, and your inner man is the righteousness of God. Uh, the condition of your inner man is acceptable to God. 
you're holy, you're forgiven, you're faultless, you're blameless, but that doesn't mean that you're strong to fight. That doesn't mean that you're strong on the inside to believe, strong to stand. And so it's not automatic being strong on the inside. And it doesn't just come by begging God to make you strong. If you're going to be strong on the inside, it'll be because you get involved in the laws that govern strength for your inner man. That's the only way to be strong on the inside. And so how are we going to get strong on the inside? Number one, we have to first acknowledge that we are spirit beings. I am a spirit being. I'm not just a body. I'm not just a mind. And then we have to acknowledge that there are laws that govern strength for my inner man. There are things that I can do that will cause my inner man to be strong and to get stronger. There are also things that I can do that will cause my inner man to be weak. And so after I acknowledge that I am a, a spirit being and acknowledge that there are things I can do to make my spirit man strong, then we have to go about getting knowledge, getting understanding about what things do I have to do to have a strong spirit. And then once I obtain that knowledge, I got to act on that knowledge. I got to put those laws that govern strength into motion. And if I do that, then I will have a strong spirit. And so I got to acknowledge that I'm a spirit being. I got to acknowledge that there's laws that govern strength. Um, I got to uh, get knowledge about those laws. And then I got to put that knowledge into practice. And if I do that, if you do that, if we do that, then and only then will we be strong on the inside. Now, why do you want to be strong on the inside? Because when I'm strong on the inside, I can believe the way I need to believe. Come on, I can choose the way I need to choose. I can fight the way I need to fight. I can speak the way I need to speak. I can hear the way I need to hear. I can love the way I need to love. I can live effectively. I can live prosperously. And I can live victoriously when my spirit man is strong. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you for revealing to us the laws that govern strength for our inner man. Lord, we're asking you to reveal those things to us by your spirit. And Lord, anything that any of us are doing right now that is causing our inner man to be weak, show that to us as well so that we can stop it and cut it off. We want to do the things that we need to do to get strong on the inside. And so Lord, we thank you for revelation of what that is. We thank you for help to put it into practice. And as we're closing out today's broadcast, we declare this in faith that we are strong spirit beings. We are strong on the inside. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Wednesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this powerful new series entitled A Strong Spirit. We'll see you then.